Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are we doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the voice of hardcore boxing. First of all, before I introduce my next guest, who you all know, I just want to say thank you to all you people who've joined our members area. We've had an avalanche of new members in the last 24 hours, so I am the blue-eyed boy today on a bank holiday Monday. I want to thank you all for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment and keep them emails coming with your ideas and people who are asking if they can come on the channel. There's a big list now and I'm starting to root through who's a troll and who's, a, who's an hardcore, but the email's porkycorner at mail.com. Today I'm joined by Michael Theo from Hornchurch, Essex, live from his office, the American Car Wash, at the side of the dual carriage. We are... Uh, American cop car parked outside is a bit of PR, mate. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Russ. That's what it's all about, mate. A bit of PR, you know what I mean? I've had a lot of emails, mate, after our video the other day, people saying that it were more of a debate and I didn't let you have your own way and blah de blah and people like that. And then we had other emails yesterday and this morning regarding your dietary advice because... You said you can eat junk on a weekend and it's good for you, didn't you? Could you explain that again to some, to some people are cu curious? Well, listen, like I was saying a few days ago, if you maintain a healthy diet in a week, yeah, Monday to Friday, I'm talking about maintaining it and keeping it tight, keeping away all your salts, your fatty foods, your saturated foods, you know, all the lovely stuff that we want to eat every day, you know, like the cheese your butters on your toast, you know, a bit of salt on this, a bit of chocolate, a bit of whatever you want to eat, the naughty stuff, the cakes, do you know what I mean? Stay away from all that, eat healthy during the week, and then you're, you're allowed to eat weekend, one a good one-day blowout. Um, if you're really strict, you know, you can push it to a day and after two days. But listen, I would suggest someone who maintains a healthy diet throughout the week, for instance, what to eat. I'll make it easy and simple for you. I mean, I do egg whites in the morning, a bit of avocado, a bit of brown bread, no butter, no mayonnaise, no whatever sauce you want to put on it, just plain, yeah? Have your coffee with that. Drink, you can drink a latte or even a cappuccino, but no chocolate. Make sure the milk's skimmed um, or semi-skimmed fine. And, and then you can have a bowl of cereal, maybe before that or after that. There again, skim milk. You can use the almond milk. You can use coconut milk in your um, whatever you want to put in there. Bran flakes, Weetabix. Um, but just check on everything you're eating. There, there's no saturates. The saturates are very low. You might have good fats in things. So you might say fat, and then it says unsaturated fats, um, polyunsaturated fats, and then you've got saturated fats. Stay away from the saturated fats. As long as they're like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.6 and all that. You don't want them up, you don't want them up in fours and fives and six grams and twelve grams of fat. A lot of people buy these cook meals. Um, um, I suppose they're working so they pop in the Mark Spencer's or, or Tesco's or Sainsbury's or anything, and they get a packet moved. And, and it says on it, you know, calorie controlled diet or whatever. But look at the saturated fats down the bottom. That's what you've got to control in your body. Saturated fats, stay away from saturated fats. And hence, your body will start leaning itself in and giving yourself shape. Um, once you do that, throughout the week, you'll see a big difference on the weight loss, number one. And number two, you think you're going to feel guilty to eat all the junk. Like I was doing the other day, donuts, cakes and biscuits and whatever you want. Chinese, Kentucky, McDonald's, anything you want, yeah? Get it down, yeah, one day. As much as you want of it, yeah? Because what it will do... When you maintain this, uh, like a healthy diet, a strict diet, your metabolism is like that, nice and easy. As soon as you whack that junk in, your body's saying, what the fuck is going on here? We need to speed up. Hence, metabolism starts shooting up through through the, through the roof to get rid of the junk it, it, you've put in your body. Because you trick it, what you're doing, you're tricking your body, basically. By adding all that junk in your, in your, into your mouth, into your body, into your system, you're telling your system to wake up and get rid of it because it's not used to it. It's used to a healthy, maintained diet, yeah, throughout the week. Because you're doing that, it's gone warm, the metabolism. It will shoot up, meaning your body's racing now to, to, to get rid of all that junk that not, it's not used to, basically. Hence, speeds your metabolism. That's what we're going to do, speed your metabolism up so it gets rid of that and burns it all. 
So by the time you finished in that day, in, within that 24 hours or 12 hours of eating, your body's still racing because it doesn't know when it's going to stop getting all that shit to get rid of, yeah? <clears throat> and it will probably race till the following Tuesday. Not Monday, but Tuesday. And then you'll feel it still racing, but you want to eat junk. And you'll be eating more food, but healthy food on Monday. And you look forward to eating healthy food because hence, you've got all that junk on Sunday or Saturday. So that's the idea. Eat, maintain the strict diet in the week. It allows you to do one big blowout. Pig out, eat what you want. Cream cakes, chocolate cakes, anything you want. Kentuckys, McDonald's, Chinese. Get it down ya. It ain't going to harm you. It will make you better. And there's, there's no secret to it, you know. I mean, I, when I was especially bodybuilding back in the day, now bodybuilding, we got, got a 0% fat rate. We, we need to get our skin so paper thin so you see the veins popping out and uh, your muscles saturates and and, and, and and the fibers popping out in your muscles when you tend to them, you know. You can see all the lines and like, Paul used to say that, you know, Tom Platts, when he shakes his leg, bing, all them lines and cuts and <laughs> illustrations and all that, you know. The quad so that's, what <laughs> that's what we're looking for, you know, to, to get that. But listen, it's simple. Maintain a healthy diet. You'll look healthy. You'll last longer. You cut your cholesterol down. You cut all the fats going into your system, which causes cholesterol through your arteries. And you'll have a clean life and you live longer. Simple. Yeah. Trevor from Middlesbrough says, why can't he eat McDonald's, cat Chinese, Indian food and sweets and that every day if that's what happens? Yeah, listen, I'll tell you what happens, yeah? Now, let me get back onto the diet. We've gone through breakfast. Now, it's a simple, easy way to maintain the rest of the day, uh, the week, shall I say, because I've just talked about breakfast. So quite a sec, easy peasy, a breast of chicken, a tin of tuna in water, prime, yeah, with a jack potato or a bit of rice. That's all you got to eat, or chicken and salad. For the rest of the week, you have your breakfast, which is a cereal, egg whites, a bit of avocado on it or whatever. And for lunch, you'll have a, um, a chicken breast, a bit of salad, or a chicken breast and a jacket potato. And that's fine throughout the week, yeah? Um, and your question, Russ, why can't he eat fatty foods throughout the week? Because... Let's say, for instance, we've been healthy from Monday to Friday, and let's go oh, Saturday, yeah? Sunday's our pick out day. So here we go Sunday, bang, we get all the food in us, yeah? If we carry on eating that food for more than three days, yeah, three days, after three days, it starts storing in the system. Hence, so the question that your chap sent you the other day um, on your cast um, or subscription, whatever. Big Trev has sent an email. Big Trev, all right, Big Trev, if you're going to be in all that food for every day, you'll end up with a balloon, mate. You know, you'll end up um, a big fat slob in a balloon. Um, I apologise if you are that way at the moment, but uh, you need to, if you are that way, you need to cut down, eat healthy and pig out once a day. Because once that one day you're pigging out, you don't want to eat any more shit and junk because you've ate so much, your body and yourself will feel guilty. You know, shit, I've ate all this food in, in your mind. I mean, it's good for your body to speed your metabolism up, yeah? And then, like I say, it takes three days to store fat constant continuously eating the fat it takes three days to store it so hence have one day it won't store it will get rid of it and squeeze your metabolism up and will trip the body yeah to so, work even harder up until tuesday so before uh, it starts slowing back down again your metabolism oh so basically trev what he's saying trev is this only pig out one day at weekend trev or two days at most you don't have to do it and you don't have to have a takeaway every night, Trev, does he? Fuck, you know. <laughs> he's, he's, listen, he's, look, he, he's asking for, a, for an early age heart attack or something going on there, a cholesterol build up. All them, all them takeaways, all the junk, all this crap that goes in your system, all it does is fur your arteries up, yeah? Now, your artery ca carries your blood flow around your body. It keeps you alive. If that blood flow stops anywhere or gets blocked anywhere, you have a seizure, you roll over, and you have a heart attack. If not, you die. So stop eating all that junk, all that uh, grease and uh, fast foods and uh, all that crap that's on the market. You can eat once a, once a day, or once a week, sorry, once a week after you've maintained a healthy diet. Um, I've been doing it for years, you know, and, you know, it hasn't done me any harm. Yeah. Uh, do you drink alcohol, mate? Do I drink alcohol? 
do you know what? I don't really, I'm not really a drinker of alcohol, but listen, if I go out for dinner, maybe have a little glass of wine, doesn't hurt you, you know. And when we was bodybuilding, um, we used to take this backstage, you know what I mean? Because having alcohol, it um, it pumps up your veins and gets some blood going through the system. And it's great for like a pre-workout. So um, a glass of wine, a bit of brandy, whatever, back in the day we used to do that. But do I drink? I don't normally drink on a regular basis. I might have a glass of wine here and there, which is healthy for you. And especially a glass of red wine, you know, with your dinner. Once a week, twice a week, you know. But I'm not really a drinker, as to such to say. Don't you like Stella, Mick? <laughs> do you know what, Russ? I hate beer. Yeah. Lagers. The only way I could drink a beer or a lager is full of ice and a bit of lemonade in it. Like that's a shandy. A, that's a shandy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, shandy. I don't mind a shandy. Um, yeah, but shandy's nice. <clears throat> On a nice hot day, loads of ice. I'll have a pint with loads of ice, you know, probably half and half or three quarters and a half. Yeah, that's all right. Or I'll tell you what I used to drink every now and then. Half a Guinness with black in it. That's what Frot Charles. Yeah, lovely drink. And it's good for you, isn't it? A bit of stout. Mm. Uh, years ago, when I first started booting <coughs> at mining, mining Village, where I'm from, we used to go in this pub called The Royal. It's not there now. And uh, I was talking to some older lads, and they were asking me about this guy. But I said, yeah, he's all right. Him over there, they goes, what are you on about? He drink Shandy. He's a dick. No offense, mm. don't, take, don't take that wrong way, Mick. We were talking like 35 years ago. It were classed as like a weak man's drink, you know, Shandy. Because obviously, growing up in a drinking culture in a mining village, you know what I mean? I understand. Yeah, but you you prefer, you probably just have that because it's a hot day, don't you, mate? And you want a cool drink, don't you? Yeah. Listen, at the end of the day, horses are courses, isn't it? If they're, if they're drinkers and they're drinking the, the proper ale up north or Yorkshire bitter or whatever they're drinking. John you know, Smith. Their, John Smith's, okay? That's their game. That's what they want to be in. But look, look what he's doing to their body, Russ. Yeah, look I know, yeah. The, it's fucking, it's completely doing them in, you know what I mean? Long term. You know, what happened to fucking John Smith the other day? He's fucking rolled over, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's brown bread. Yeah, it's not healthy, is it? You know? It's not healthy. Sitting there, fucking drinking every night, you know? You say it's a man's thing. It ain't a man's thing. I'd rather sit and have a shandy, man, not roll over. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. I suppose when you put it like that, Mick, you know, you're talking sometimes, but you know when you were a young lad, 17, sneaking into the local pub? Listen, I was the same. I was out with my mates when I was 17. You know, they're fucking knocking it down. You know, we want to be men there, don't we? They want to smoke. They want to fucking drink. It's normal for us. I was yeah. out with him and trying to knock these drinks down. I'm, I can't fucking drink. I don't want to drink. I hate the stuff because they're doing it. We're doing it. You know, I want to be part of the lads. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that's just the way growing up is, isn't it? You know, when we're young, we want to be old. When we're old, we want to be younger. And that's just life, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Did you make a lot of mistakes when you were young, mate? A lot of mistakes in what respect? As a teenager, did you make many mistakes? You know? Yeah, you listen, it's you not mistakes. It's what... It's, listen, it's what we do when we're young. We're, we're silly, we're ruthless. We do silly things, don't we? Do you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I've done, but listen, yeah, I've done loads of naughty things we shouldn't have done. But that's a part of growing up, isn't it? You've got yeah. to do these things to realise and get a smack on the back of the wrist or what, or again, you know, to, to realise you've done wrong. And it's like anything. You start bringing a dog up, you know what I mean? A dog, you know, he starts chewing something or he's chewing your sofa. You fucking will like wallop me. You won't chew the sofa again, will he? Eh? Same thing. Yeah. Sort of growing up stage, Russ. Mm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if we've spoke about this before, but uh, I've had a couple of questions in. Somebody said to me, were you a womanizer back in the day, mate, when you in your youth? Was I a womanizer? I wouldn't say I was a woman. We're males, isn't we, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? I mean, listen, I, I worked in clubs all my life, you know. Um, to be honest, yeah. Working in clubs all my life, you know, there's women everywhere. No, I didn't really get involved, to be honest, yeah. Um, no, I was more into my work, you know what I mean? Looking for tr the troublemakers and, you know. But, um, yeah, no, I wasn't really a womanizer back in the day, to be honest, yeah. <clears throat> so, somebody's asked me to ask you, if, 
What what did Lenny McLean used to wear on door on a cold night? Did he wear a sheepskin or a leather or a crombie? He never stood under the door, Lenny. We sat in an office just just inside the door. Yeah, a little little office. Only when there was trouble, he'd come out of his hatch or his office. <laughs> his you hatch. Know? You know, come out of his yeah, cage. It's like releasing the the um, uh, I don't know what we call him. You know. The, 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 the monster, you know what I mean? The, the governor. <laughs> is that what, what, as soon as he used to come out, did he used to lead you all into battle? Yeah, listen, I remember we worked in the Camden Palace for oh, 1980, late 80s, okay? Um, me and Len used to go upstairs in the restaurant, we used to have a break all the time. And like I say, he took, he took me under his wing back in the day. We used to go and have a nice steak, you know, the full works with me, you know what I mean? And we used to get a phone call up in the restaurant from downstairs, then you wanted trouble. But he used to go, fucking hell, you know what I mean? He didn't want to leave his dinner, you know? So we'd go down and then we'd wait for him, you know? We'd go, we'd put his pads on and go down, go, 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 basically go to work, you know what I mean? And he'd be the leader. There'd be like 12 doormen behind him, like following him, going through the club and then take care of it, you know? But no one was allowed in to the club where the trouble was unless Lenny's in front of it, you know? He was like a sergeant major. But went about. But you, was, could, uh, you got on got on with him, did you, uh, mate? Yeah, we got on like a, you know, like great. You know what I mean? Like I say, well, I was very close with them. We trained together. We done what we done together, and then um, uh, yeah, we worked together as well, and uh, become great friends over the years. And uh, it's a shame like he passed away so young, with um, cancer. In the How brain. old were you? Forty nine or something. Something like that, Russ. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was with him right to, to, to like near the end. You know, he was walking around, his had barely could walk, and he was walking with a stick and all that. And I used to pick him up, we used to go for some dinner and that and have a good old chat. But yeah, what a great man he was, you know, a legend, you know, and a hard man with it, you know. Not like not like not like some people like it, that don't for punch. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Um yeah, a respect uh... a respectful man, you know what I mean? And um, you know. A guy that could have it, and, and and he is what he was at the end of the day. A lovely man, a lovely family had as well, you know. Um, shame that you know, like I say, they was on the train, and now fortunately they're off the train. Yeah. Um, out of the life, you know, <clears throat> and his wife passed away young as well, you know. Bless her, oh. Valerie, lovely lady. But the kids are still alive. Well, I, I see Jamie every now and then. He's he's a good lad. Uh, Kelly, I don't see. I said, Kel, if you're you're hearing this or you're listening to it, it'd be nice to get in touch one day and even send me t- uh, an email or send it to Russ and you give it to me and I'll uh, nice to say hello to you. I spoke to you for years. Like I said, I knew you from you two was when you was kids growing up, you know, back in the day. Mm. But um, it would be nice to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, what you got planned for the rest of the day, mate? Russ, it's going to be a lovely day today. Like I say, you know, um, got me shorts on today. And uh, I'm just going to do, I don't know, I ain't, I ain't got nothing in my mind yet. But yeah, I'll probably go, go back home, sit in the garden, chill out, have a barbecue, do something, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> just, popped into work, no, just popped into work today, see how they are. They're really busy out there. Um, yeah, it's good. We've still got the same lads that are working for you, mate, as we when I was here, yeah? Yeah, same lads, mate. They're all good boys. Yeah. And yourself, what have you been doing, Russ? I know you had a little workout today. Yeah, I've just done a chest and chest. You've me a lovely video this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had a bit of a workout this morning. I've done an interview with a guy called Richard from Rotherham. Uh, he's, he's made his debut. He couldn't get his picture on the thing at first, but eventually he managed to sort it. Uh, had, a, had a good chat with Richard. Uh, that video's up, ready to go. There's going to be four videos out today. There's going to be <coughs> one Richard, the one with Max mm. from Scarborough, and the helmets is out tonight. Helmets right. of the month. The month. And it's a cork. I, w- I wonder who that is. Well, you'll have to wait and see. Have to yeah. tune in later on. But it's it's all it's all good positive stuff. It's end of month, so I heard you're doing very well on, on people subscribing to your channel, Russ, and I'm getting a lot of feedback from people doing it as well. Yeah, it's uh, done about. Seven. I spoke I spoke to Decker Hedgy today. That does the um, the other he actually runs a podcast show himself, 
he, he had nothing to say but great stuff about you today and he yeah. loved the channel. I watched and he, his, wants to get uh, an, he wants to get an interview with you as well. I said, oh, yeah. Russ will be up for that. Yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going in the uh, yeah. right direction, actually. Obviously, it's what I wanted, It's but I don't think that I can manage it all on my own at times because it's like 16, 17 hours a day. You have to keep on top of everything. Uh, I do get some help, but obviously... Mm -hmm. People want pain, don't they? And do you know what I mean? It's uh, nobody works for no, do they? Unless they're me, unless you work for exactly. Dennis, unless you work for Dennis on a ticket deal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dennis, but you know, I don't like ticket deals, but I love you really, but not as a boxing person. Outside of boxing, you're all right, Dennis, but you chat too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always having a pop at Den, bless him. No, I, uh, the channel's going in the right direction. I'm happy, very happy, more than happy. We know <coughs> it's going, yeah. I just need a little bit of help with all these. Well, somebody's supposed to be doing all my comments and emails and that, and then they have a day off, and then they do it, then they have a day off. And sometimes trying to keep on top of everything is too much for me. You know, I've only got a... Any more questions, Russ? I've got a small pea brain. Yeah, there's one more question. Uh, what's fastest you've ever driven a car? That's like that's for a Marcus in Pontefract. Two hundred and thirty miles an hour. Two hundred and thirty, Mick. Where's that at? I had an old Porsche um, nine nine three Turbo S, the air cooled ones. They're probably worth a, near close to a million pound now. If, you know, um, the nine nine three Turbo body, big big body on it, uh, it had air inductions on the rear arches. Um, Turbo S, it was. Um, I had a good friend of mine, which was just specialised in Porsches. We staged two it up, um, ECU'd up this bits and pieces uh, that he done to it, changed the inlets and the camshafts and a few other bits, changed the suspension. He done this. I spent fortunes on it. I wish I kept it today. We were for fortune. Uh, yeah. um, so you can imagine that this this thing was to basically take the bits and put back together. Uh, especially all the suspension was ripped out and put new suspension because <clears throat> of the power it's going to be uh, um, uh, pushing out. And we wanted it to handle and not over roll and all sorts. Um, and I took it for a test ride. And I had this uh, this half cast chap that was a mechanic down there. His name was Leroy. He's quite a funny guy. He had dreads. Never. So was Somebody called uh, Leroy with dreads. I don't believe you. And I swear to you, his name was Leroy, but he had dreads, yeah? Uh, oh, I've got a lovely, lovely guy, and he was actually smoking. He loved the, the old spliff, you know what I mean? So this is, I'm going back about 20 years ago, Russ, maybe a bit, <laughs> maybe, maybe a bit longer. And so he's a left-hand driver, my Porsche, yeah? Um, I had quite a few lefties back in the day, but they say left-hand driver is, is the right car, correct car, that's how they're built. Yeah. It's only we get them changed over for this market. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving it through the gears, <clears throat> so I'm in third gear now, whacking it down, and I hear... <laughs> I said, Leroy, because I'm looking to his, my right now. I said, Leroy, the fucking clutch is slipping. He said, no, man, the wheels are spinning. <laughs> it's quite funny, you know. So we're doing that over 100 miles an hour in third gear now. And I said to him, the clutch is going. He said, no, man, the, the wheels are spinning. <laughs> so the, the thing was rapid. You know what I mean, anyway, cut a long story short. Went back to go. He's really pleased with the car. And I took it down this stretch of road. Um, that was like no one really went down. It was quite it's a bit of a dual carriageway, but it, it went for miles. And I, I, I legged it, really pushed my foot to the floor on this thing just to see what it do, you know. So, yeah, about 2.30 I got out of it. And uh, it was it was a bit, I was a bit scary to be honest. I was doing me cross. Was, Here we go. This car's been unbolting and bolting back together, so especially the suspension, the wheels and all that, you know what I mean? So that was was, was in my head all the time, you know. But no, listen, touch wood, you know, it was, it was, it was great. It, it done what it should have done. It was a powerful car. But listen, sometimes you get used to cars, you get fed up with cars, you want to change. But now that car's worth probably a million pound plus, you know, the 993 air-cooled Turbo S. Great car. Still is a great car. They do, you know? Fact, do you know uh, Shane, who, who came up to, to have that meal with us from all? In yeah. Years ago, uh, when I got out of prison in 04, I went to see him, and he had a 911, a red one, and uh, took me out in it. And you let it go for buttons, right? The same car's worth about half a million now. You know, 911 convertible. Yeah, yeah. And 
he, he must be devastated. Have you seen, you've seen what they fetch, haven't you? There's well, listen, two... I, had a, I had an Enzo Ferrari. I paid half a million pounds for it in Monaco. Yeah. Um, 2007. Um, I had it for two years. I sold it for 650. It's worth two million euros now. Mm. Do you know? You know, this Mick, Mick, the one that skimped that highest cars, you know, that geezer. Yeah. Well, do you know that uh, them photographs you showed me of them Lamborghinis at your home? In your yeah. garage home? Well, one of them a purple one. Or were it, were it a, a, like a, an orangey colour? I forget now. Wait, a Diablo. It was a, uh, yeah, that no, was a Murchilago. Murchilago. Murchilago, that's it. They don't seem yeah, to fetch. Diablo, Diablo, Diablo was before that. That was yeah, a nice yeah. car, Diablo. Yeah, then it was yeah. a Mercia Largo. Yeah. Then he went to the new model. Dwight York had a Diablo. I remember seeing him in one in one of them one day. But the one you had, the Mercia Largo, they don't fetch a lot of money, do they then? Uh, well, now I don't think, I, I don't know, the rest, I don't even know what, it, I don't look at the prices too much. But I don't think they, they, they've gone up like other cars, no. But listen, it will hold its money if it's got low mileage and it ain't been touched, you know. I mean, I put big boy exhausts on mine and all sorts back in the day. Because um, I said, I got, well, I still do. A friend of mine called Verdi Ferrari, they specialise in Ferraris. And he actually came over to um, France with me. It was Italy, but we went, stayed at France and we went over the border to Italy um, to, um, no, it was in, um, yeah, South of France. And to, to, to Monaco, in fact, that's where we bought it in Monaco. Um, and he came over, flew over there, and he put his SD2 machines. There's a plug-in that diagnoses the car. It yeah. tells you how many times the car door's been open, the wind, the, uh, the, the bonnet's been open. tells you everything about the car. He te- checked all the car out for me. And he was the guy that used to fit all the bits and pieces on my cars back in the day, you know what I mean? Uh, see, still a good friend of mine. <laughs> see, I've never had stuff like that, that supercar stuff. Closest ever came was in the year 2000. I went to buy a Lotus, this Sprit Turbo, and my brother taught me out of it because the tyres were fortunes for them. And he said, it's not just buying it, because it was only like 12 grand. <laughs> it were maintaining it. So God knows what it would be to maintain them cars like you're on about there, you know, Musi Lagos and stuff like that. I mean, what are clutches on them and brake pads and that kind of thing, mate? Yeah, listen, I think, it, I think it's because it's the make, the name. Um, hence the price, you know what I mean, and the working on it to, to fix it. Um, listen, if you know someone, it costs you nothing at the end of the day. But listen, if you own a Bugatti today, yeah, each tyre, one tyre is £6,000. Yeah. yeah. So it's nearly, you know, 24 grand for a set of tyres and a service is 25 grand. So you're looking at 50 grand for a service and a set of tyres on that car. So forget buying it, which is a lump of money. It's maintaining it. So yeah. they're saying, listen, it's it, it's all about who's got the most money out there, isn't it? We, there's, there's, there's different levels of people buying and spending at the end of the day, you know? If you've got the money to buy a £1.4 million pound Bugatti, that's the lowest one, the cheapest one, yeah? It's still going to cost you 50 grand to service that and put a set of tires on it. Yeah, and you know? it's obviously... Uh... Yeah. It's made by VW, isn't it? Volkswagen. Yeah. Interesting. Bugatti, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okie dokie then. Well, listen, mate. Thanks for coming on. Mon- Bank holiday Monday morning. We'll get this out there this afternoon. Mm. You've been a real help to the channel this week. It's been a fantastic month, for mate, for my channel. Uh, I'm really yeah. impressed with, with where it's going. 400,000 views, nearly. Well... Uh, but month biggest ever. Well, well done. Smashed it all month. Uh, I'm happy, and like I said, things are happening for me behind the scenes, and I'm happy. I'm in a good place. It's hard work pays <laughs> off, doesn't it? Hundred percent. So, but okay. Look, well, rough. I think the reason why you're getting all the hits because you speak from there. Yeah. The heart, mate. Yeah. And you you say it, and I say it how it is. Yeah. There's no, other, there's no other better way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we, we don't take videos down as much as people, I don't even think people tell you to take videos down, do they? I don't think so. I've never heard you say they're, to, they're telling me to take it down. You tell them fuck off. I think, I've took one, I think I took one video yeah. down, I think, and I might have, that might have been on Twitter. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, there's been one one video I've took down. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we're, 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 I think we had a problem with YouTube with it, or somebody had a complaint. I think we took one down. That's it. You know, yeah, fourteen hundred videos. You speak the truth. That's what people want to hear. They know when you speak, it's the gospel, and it ain't bullshit. They're not listening to a channel that talks a lot of crap. You know what I mean? Like other channels, they they, they make stories up. You know? No. Oh, um, for instance, people like. Listen, I've got nothing against Eddie Earn, but the stuff he's coming out with lately, yeah, deal's done, sealed, lovely, this, that, blah, blah, blah. He makes himself look an idiot, doesn't he? He's what? Now, a professional, Eddie Hearn, a professional, listen, Eddie jump leaps and bounds to get to where he is, yeah? He's probably the top promoter out here now, yeah? Um, and coming out with, I've signed the deal and it's done and it's happening on the 14th of so-and-so month with Tyson and um, uh, Joshua, you know? Mm. He's made himself look an idiot, isn't he? He's addicted a man to of, of his caliber. He's addicted to, to light. camera, Mick. Isn't he? He's addicted to, to camera. You know, you know, I mean, like you say, once you say lie, you've got to keep telling more lies. Or shut it down. You've got to keep telling porkies. Or keep telling porky pies. <laughs> or shut it down and say, look, we don't, we, we don't want to talk about the millions we get to charity. So don't ask again. It's none of your business. Mm. Well, why tweet about it then? Okay, okay then. Well, listen, you have a great day, Mick, and we'll yeah. chat later probably. All right, my friend. Once again, thank you for all my sponsors that sponsor me uh, for this channel, and thank you, Russ, for sticking by me. Team Theo, we're going all the way. Guys, stick around, Ned. Who are your sponsors? Who are your, sponsor? who are your sponsors? Do you want to read them uh, out? We've got, we got the Ability Group. Um, they specialise in uh, Hilton Hotels. We've got them all over all over the UK, great hotels. Um, they got one right opposite the Echo Arena in Liverpool as well. Uh, so anytime there's a fight up there, we used to go up there and they got a club up there as well in, in, the, in the in the in the uh, hotel. So Ability Group, I mean, they're all over. They got them in London, they got them in Manchester. They got them all over the place. Ability Group hotels. Um, <clears throat> you got a watch company called. Um, uh, official watches, uh, Dino, a good friend of mine for many years. In fact, I got him in the, into the watch business, and now he's probably one of the top top sellers um, in 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 probably in the UK. Definitely, he's the main man in the UK. Um, all through me, basically, I used to sell a few watches here and there. So I introduced him to the, the people I dealt with, and he's made it to the top. And well done to him. You know, he's a, he's a great sponsor to the channel. Um, so. Um, official watches, anyone, listen, everyone wants a watch, a Rolex, and, you know, whatever watch they want, you know, he get he supply it, no problem. Um, obviously, we've got Taste of Cyprus that do lovely cuisine, Greek cuisine. They've been sponsoring, like, since day one as well. Great, great food. You've been down there, Russ, you, you sampled food. Yeah. Um, we've got Marble Fantasy, which is a, a Marble Fantasy, which is a marble company that does granite, marble, uh, any any sort of slabs of material you want. Um, for a friend of mine called Jimmy, thank you very much for sponsorship. Um, we got um, fancy that online casino uh, gambling um, app that's uh, been going very strong for the last year. So if you fancy that, it's actually called I Fancy That, which is a great name for a, a casino, uh, online casino um, gambling pundit place. You know what I mean? So if you fancy that, fancy a bet. Get onto that. I fancy that. They're online. Can't miss them. Big green logo on a, on a spinning wheel. I fancy that. Okay, um, okay. Raymond Davis. A big thank you to Raymond Davis, friend of mine that's uh, been with me for a few, a good few months now. Probably about eight, six, seven months. Uh, business entrepreneur. Um, great guy. Um, he's been with me for quite a while now. Um, Raymond Davis, and you've got uh, a tyre company called Direct Tyres, Kevin. Um, they specialise in uh, mobile tyres. You break down on the motorway like three o'clock in the morning in London on the outskirts of the M25. Bang, they'll be there for you. So Direct Tyres, they're on the um, 118500, whatever you want to call it, or they're on the internet. Direct Tyres, anytime you get a breakdown, punch out, you're in trouble. He's the man to get you out of trouble and get your tyres on and get you fixed and get you rolling. Thank you very much, everyone. And that's it, Russ. All right, then. Well, I, think, I think I've 
I think I've uh, named them all, yeah. I think I have, yeah. All if right. I haven't, do apologise, but I don't think I have. All right then, Mick. Well, listen, so Bank Holiday uh... Monday, don't have nightmares, John Fury. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you forgot John Fury. John Fury. Did you wish him happy, happy anniversary the other day for not fighting? No, I didn't. John, happy anniversary, you bottle job. You <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> so from John, from me and the and the Porky, happy birthday. Sorry, happy birthday. Happy Valentine. The Valentine's happy what? Anniversary. For not fighting, you bottle job. <laughs> mate, you stuttering. I'm, Have you got brain damage or something, mate? You know what? I'm just getting <laughs> excited. I'm excited, Russ. I don't know. Are you, are you wet at the mouth about getting 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 your teeth you in? You know what it is? It's all that fucking sugar I had yesterday, wasn't it? All that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll speak to you in a bit, mate. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Peace out. Peace push out, the button. Mate. Don't forget, push that button underneath. Subscribe right. to the Pulpy channel. <laughs> Cheers, mate.